Joshua chapter 14, verse 12. Uh, this is Caleb talking. Remember, Caleb and Joshua were the two that distinguished themselves early uh, with the nation of Israel after they uh, left the promised land. And, and you'll uh, see very clearly what it was that distinguished them. Verse 12, Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day, for you heard him talk about how the Anakims were here. Now the Anakims was the, the race of giants, you know, and uh, Goliath, was, was a part of that. Of course, he was sometime later. Okay? And so the, the Anakims were, were the, the race of giants that were occupying the, the promised land. So today uh, would represent to us an obstacle in our lives that, that we're going to overcome. So uh, hallelujah. We'll talk specifically about that in just a moment how the Anakims were there, and the cities were great and fenced. If so be that the Lord be with me, then I shall drive them out as the Lord said. Hallelujah. Now remember, God gave them power to possess the promised land and to overcome. And so uh, Caleb, is, Caleb and Joshua were two of the original group that got a hold of the promise. Okay? And uh, wow, you know, there were 12 spies that went in originally to spy out the land, and, and all 12 of them came back, okay? And they said, well, you know, it's true. It, it is a land flowing with milk and honey, but wow, you know, we, the, the, the giants were there, and we felt like grasshoppers in their sight. Hallelujah. So that, that thing that, you know, their personal self-image actually came to pass just exactly the way they said it. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, glory to God. So, Caleb and Joshua were known to be the only two spies who had faith to conquer. So, uh, here, you know, what, what Caleb is saying is, you know, I don't really care if there's giants. You know, I, I'm going in to possess and notice how he said, if, if the Lord is involved in this, then I'm not going to have any problem, just like he said, driving this out of our lives. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, while we're there, if you would please just go with me right over to Joshua chapter 1. Hallelujah. Now, there was a promise... Uh, that was given to the nation of Israel that the, the promised land belonged to them, but they had to go in to possess it. Okay, now that, that actually it, uh, creates a parallel for our New Testament lifestyles because Jesus died to give us many things, okay? But what we have to do is believe and go in and possess, Hallelujah. Now, so he, here's a statement that God made to Joshua, uh, chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, God said to Joshua, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you as I said to Moses. So, in other words, God uh, made the promise, and he was actually quoting the promise that he had made to Abraham. Remember, uh, God cut the covenant with Abraham, and the, the promised land was a part of uh, the promised structure that belonged to them. And so every person, uh, every Israelite, so to speak, inherited the promise. And then when it was time for them to go in and possess the land, it, the way God talked about it is it's already yours. I've already, already given it to you. But now, every place on which your foot shall tread, that's going to be what you possess. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, uh, not unlike uh, what uh, the New Testament is for us today. So uh, just a little, uh, if you would please turn back over to the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Let's talk just uh, briefly here about power. So, uh, so the... Uh, 
uh, New Testament and the Old Testament tell us that Joshua and Caleb both operated by faith. So that, that thing that Caleb was saying was really uh, faith releasing out of his mouth. And he, he was actually able to conquer because he said it. Now maybe he didn't understand all of that. Okay, but th therein lies the uh, mystery of the power of God. You know, you, you know we, we, I like the little illustration. You can walk in this room and flick the light switch. You don't have to know all of the intricacies about the lighting system in this room, but all you got to do is turn the lights on and they come on. Okay, well, the power of God is like that. Okay. You don't have to uh, know every detail about the way the power works, but what you need to be able to do is flick the switch. Go in and possess. Hallelujah. All right, so this, this is one of those uh, types of power. Okay. But if you would look at verse 8 of Acts chapter 1, uh, God was talking uh, to the early church group, praise the Lord, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So that same power, that power will make a believer a witness. So, uh, wow, that's, that's one of the purposes of power. Uh, the one that we're talking about tonight is uh, power has a purpose. And one of the purposes is to facilitate our conquering. All right, now, uh, to make sure that we understand what God is saying to us about the necessity of the power, uh, if you would please go back with me to uh, Luke chapter 24. And this is a statement that Jesus made uh, just prior to the one that I read to you. Hallelujah. Verse 49, and he's talking to the early church group. He said, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Now, we, we were just reading about that, and, and that's back there in Acts chapter 1. It's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So the power of God will come on you. Now, just a little bit about that for your benefit. Uh, under the Old Covenant, the power of God came predominantly on people to accomplish things. And it, and, uh, but then there were some that were filled with the Holy Ghost, which would be the priest, the prophet, and the king. Okay? So, uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, generally the, the people at large uh, would not be filled with the Holy Ghost. Even though the Holy Ghost would come on them, the power of God would come on them to accomplish things. So, uh, but New Testament, we, it's the Spirit within and the Spirit upon. So we, we have all, all of the same attributes that were under the Old Covenant, the power to accomplish things, even though, you know, you, you're not necessarily going to be uh, killing giants. But there's other kinds of giants that you deal with. And you, uh, you know, you probably have already slain a few. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll talk about that uh, momentarily. But look at this, what Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father. That's, that's actually the way it was stated, the, the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God would come on people, and that was the promise of the Father. I send the promise of my Father upon you, but wait, tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Now, they, you know, he, he was resurrected standing right in front of them, and they believed on it, which means they were saved. Okay, yeah, that was a good place to say amen. Hallelujah. Okay, but Jesus is telling them, look, don't go out and engage this thing until the, the power comes on, until you're endued with power from on high. 
Hallelujah. Now then, so what, what Jesus was talking about is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which he uh, unveils. Uh, we read about it in Acts chapter 1. That's the promise of the Father. Okay. Hallelujah. Calls it by name. Uh, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now that's the promise of the Father. How many of you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Okay, well then the promise of the Father has come on you. All right, and so what Jesus was saying is, look, don't go out there and start contacting uh, the enemy without the power. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so... Uh, in the New Covenant, let, let's talk about this a little bit. You know, with, the, with the, the promised land, see, it was theirs by covenant, okay? And so, uh, all the time that they were in bondage in Egypt, the promised land was actually theirs by, by promise. That's why it's called the promised land. And, and God uh, gave it to them by covenant, okay? So, it was theirs all along, but God empowered them to go in and take it. Remember what uh, Caleb said. He said, if God be with me, then I, I'll be able to conquer that mountain and kill these giants. It was a whole race of giants. You know, it, it, it would be like uh, maybe the word infestation uh, would not be improper, but there was an infestation of giants now, they were kind of spread around the world, uh, different groups of them, but there was a, a, a large group of giants in the promised land. So, Caleb and Joshua both contacted, you know, they came in contact with that when they went in to spy out the land, but they said, you know, we're well able to do this. I mean, wow, look at this. We just crossed the Red Sea. <laughs> okay. And so, uh, you know, they, they said, wow, uh, you know, uh, you guys can be the grasshoppers, but we'll go ahead and, and t go in and, t and possess the land. So they, they were positioning themselves for the power to come on them to go in and conquer. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, one more of these, if you would please go with me over to Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. Now, so when you're reading through the book of Hebrews, um, the writer of the book of Hebrews kind of makes a, a big deal out of the fact that the nation of Israel had all of this benefit afforded to them but, you know, the reason why they didn't go in to possess the promised land was not because they weren't able it was because they didn't believe. All right, so uh, if you would please look at this with me. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, it says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Okay, so, uh, and, you know, and, and he's talking to us indirectly. Uh, look at verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Hallelujah. Which means, okay, we're already saved. Uh, as he said, as I, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from before the foundation of the world. So, uh, with us, nation of Israel, he, he's really talking about us. From before the foundation of the world, the promised land of, of God's inheritance that he's given to us was ours. Just like when the nation of Israel were, were in bondage. So all the time that you were growing up, your inheritance belonged to you. But it wasn't until, uh, and, and I can relate to it with myself, one day I, I just kind of got uh, fed up with the other kingdom the kingdom of darkness, and the enemy, you know, I knew he was coming after me. 
And, and it, it was partly because I had said with my mouth, well, I believe I'm going to accept Jesus today. I, I had no idea what I was talking about, but I drew a swarm of demonic activity that attacked me. Praise the Lord. And so uh, I got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, healed, delivered, called into the ministry, all of it in, in one day. Hallelujah. All right. Now, so, uh, but there uh, remains, uh, it says, if you would uh, look down at verse 10, for he that enter, ha, is entered into his rest or is saved, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. So, uh, you know, the, this victory that we have in Christ Jesus, what he's saying is you, you and I can't work that by ourselves. So that's the reason why Caleb said, Look, you know, uh, I, I want the mountain. Give me the mountain. And if God looks uh, favorably on me, then I will be able to run out uh, the possessors, the current possessors. Hallelujah. All right, so let's, let's talk just a little bit about the kind of things that we've been delivered from. Okay. So uh, one of the, the standing things, like I was sharing with you a moment ago, uh, that is New Testament promise is uh, we, we're delivered from financial bondage. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you know, that's bigger for some people than it is for other people. Okay. So uh, I, I personally was raised poor. Okay. Grew up in, in, in a bad place. I know what it's like to be hungry. Uh, you know, I... I I personally had broken bones in my body that we didn't have the money. I didn't even bother with thinking about going to the doctor. We didn't go to the doctor. We didn't have the money for that. We didn't have insurance. We didn't, we didn't go that direction. Hallelujah. God is good. So I know what it's like to be poor. And, I, and wow, I am enjoying being delivered from poverty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so then one of the other things, uh, and, and this is something I believe that every person in this room can identify with, every person that is alive has dealt with sickness and disease. Okay, so you know the, uh, what, what I'm showing you here is we're identifying the giants. Okay, and so what a believer to, uh, of today can do, should do, is say, you know what? I'm not going to live the rest of my life here subject to these giants. I'm ready to overcome and conquer. Now, it, keeping in mind, the pattern shows us that it takes power to do that. So this is one of the purposes of the power. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so uh, then um, just a couple of more of these uh, Wow, you know, uh, some people are bound by drugs. You could and should go ahead and say amen. Okay, alcohol. Now, the, these are just, you know, some of the things. Uh, hallelujah. And, and the, you know, these things are even identified as medical conditions with, with people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, you know, it doesn't make any difference what it is. It's a name that is under his name. Hallelujah. And, and so we've been delivered from it. So uh, the, the, the point that we're making to you uh, is that even when you're saved, you're, you're still going to have to use power to enter in to possess the things that belong to you. So freedom from drugs and alcohol and marriage problems, financial problems, uh, uh, sickness and disease, uh, all of those things are conquerable, but not in our own ability. It takes power to do that. So that's one of the purposes of power. Hallelujah. Now, what a believer uh, today, it's just like what, what, what Caleb, see, Caleb uh, was not saved. But yet he, he uh, seemed to understand 
how to, uh, you know, direct power. So uh, any believer uh, today can learn how to uh, operate in the power of God to deal with things that hold people captive, which can, can be you. Now, so here's just a little illustration for you. So uh, growing in the Lord is not unlike going in step by step to possess the promised land. And, and as you're going in to possess, uh, you run into some things that you uh, did not run into before. And, and so these, uh, Jesus called them mountains. So you're going to, uh, you know, so what he does is he teaches us how to use what's available to us to deal with the, the situation so that we keep going. So possessing the promised land is, is the goal to get uh, free from uh, the entanglements that have held us captive. Hallelujah. Now, so he, here's some really good news for us. Because of what Jesus did for us at Calvary, there is no sickness or disease. There is no financial problem. There is no drug or alcohol problem. There are no problems that are too big to hold a, or so big that they could hold a believer captive. We have been delivered. Hallelujah. So all, any and all things are conquerable. Hallelujah. Now, so uh, let's back up just a, a step. You know, you, you run into the mountain, you run into the giant. And, and then the Holy Ghost uh, says, you know what? I want to teach you how to use power to deal with that problem. Okay. So uh, makes no difference how deep or dark the addiction may be or whatever the, the bondage is. You know, maybe it's bondage to the refrigerator. Yeah, some, sometimes people are held captive by those things. Obsessive compulsive disorders of different types. Hallelujah. But nothing can hold you captive because Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. And, and so then if, if you get a hold of this, the power of God is released to us to give us the ability to uh, go in and possess the promises that belong to us. So the promises of God are ours, just like the promised land was for the nation of Israel. But we have to go in step by step to possess it. And it is a walk, which is, you know, that's the way the New Testament describes this. It's a walk. Hallelujah. So we, we walk in. Uh, to the possessions that belong to us. We learn how to use the power. We conquer the enemies. And then we live in peace in the promised land. And all of this is prior to going to heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah, it, it's right here and right now is where the enemies are. There's, there's not going to be any sickness or disease in heaven. There's not going to be even any marriage. So there couldn't be a marriage problem. You're going to be married to the lamb. <laughs> no relationship problems. Right, so, so it, it's not talking about heaven. It's talking about now. Hallelujah. So all of the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yea and amen. So there, there is nothing, in, and it, it might take a minute for this to soak into you, but if, if you are living a life in accommodation of uh, a giant in the land, then uh, you, you don't have to do that. Well, you know, so the, the record shows that the nation of Israel, they went in and possessed the promised land. Uh, Caleb did conquer his mountain, drove out the Anakim, Hallelujah. But there were other groups of Israelites who let the enemy stay. 
And so they, they lived under the shadow of this thing. You know, they never actually fully conquered. So they lived in the shadow of this oppression. Okay, but uh, you and I personally don't have to do that. So we're kind of sounding a clarion call uh, here tonight. Hallelujah. God, and, I, and I realize, you know, it, it's uh, right before Easter and, and uh, whatever else there may be. Hallelujah. But uh, it doesn't make any difference what the circumstances are. Wow. You know, so uh, Caleb was over 80 years old when they, they crossed over the, rid, uh, the River Jordan uh, to go in and, and possess. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you know, he, he kind of left a lot of the fighting up to his uh, nephews and family members, uh, which it talks about uh, there in those passages. Hallelujah. Yeah, and, and, and he just let them do it because it was the, the power was not in the sword or in his ability. The power was with the Lord having favor upon him and it was because of the promise. See, God was keeping his promise. So it's the same thing with, with us. You know, if, if, we're, if the enemy's trying to hold us captive with something, uh, then learning the ways of power uh, are the step necessary to drive the enemy out of our lives. Hallelujah. Okay, so tonight we're going to do just a, a little bit of, of that. We're going to take some action here against the enemy and go in and possess uh, our, our freedom. Praise the Lord. God is good. So I'm going to ask you if you would please stand to your feet. Uh, and like, like I said a moment ago, uh, there are no circumstances uh, so great that freedom can't be had right here and right now. Amen. Glory to God. God is good. Okay, so uh, thank God for his grace. I led, uh, read off a list of things and uh, wow, it, it could be that there, you know, that, that uh, touched on some things with you, but uh, it could be something un th that we didn't talk about. But you say, you know what? I'm tired of being held captive. Okay? So if I'm talking to you and you say, you know what I want to do? I want to do what Caleb did. I want to use my voice to express what belongs to me. If I'm talking to you, I'm going to ask you to please come up here uh, to the front. And let's do it together. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, the Anakim, you know, they, they didn't name all the individual uh, giants. Okay? So, uh, I, I don't need to know uh, the, the source of, or the name of the thing, okay? And, and actually, you don't either, you know? <laughs> and it just so happened that, that Goliath was, you know, such his name was uh, notable, okay? Uh, but like I said, he came along sometime later uh, in, in the picture. You know, if, if uh, uh, in Caleb's generation... If they had cleaned out all of the giants, Goliath would have never even been there. Because he, he still had several brothers that David had to kill too. Hallelujah. God, and, and that was uh, several hundred years after they went in to possess the promised land. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Okay, so... Uh, Whatever the, the source of the bondage is, it makes no difference. We know it's the devil. It's darkness. And so we're going to break the power of the darkness just like Caleb did. Now, now that's what actually what he did when he, when he said, give me that mountain. I'll go, there, go in there and clean that thing out. <laughs> Boy, I, I like talk like that, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
God is good. And, and then he did just exactly what he said he would do. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, the power doesn't come from man. It comes from him. All right, so uh, I, I'm going to lead you in a confession. This, this is kind of a rowdy thing. Okay, so, so you can, just like Caleb did, he, he just bellowed maybe a little bit. said, you know what? I'm done with these giants. I don't care who they are. They're all going to bow their knee. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And you got a name that's above every name. That's one of the, the power uh, events. Hallelujah. We, we read one. Uh, yeah. Uh, dunamis power. Hallelujah. Now, G Jesus used his faith to send dunamis to do things. Hallelujah. That, that's just a little bit of uh, how, you know, the different types of power work together. Hallelujah. But it all works to our advantage to accomplish our freedom. All right, so if you would just say this with me. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for my freedom. I acknowledge and receive the victory that you gave me from Calvary. Lord Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the works of darkness in my life. I will never be bound again. I'm done with being pushed down by the enemy. I'm done with oppression. I will no longer stand in the shadow of darkness. In Jesus' name, I call myself free right now in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, just like Caleb, talking about his inheritance, I receive from you my full inheritance. I will not be cheated in this life or out of anything in the future. I will go in and possess what belongs to me in Jesus' name. Every place on which my foot shall tread is already mine by covenant in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for my freedom. I call myself free. I am a conqueror. I operate in conquest. I know how to use the power of God, I know how to get out of the way. Just like Caleb, stepping out of the way and letting God take over. So I do that right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. I will not block your, your operation in my life but you'll be able to reach it in my life, just like you did with Caleb. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for my freedom. I call myself free as of right now. I will not allow the enemy to stay in my camp. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God is, ooh, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Now, uh, I, per I personally have no idea of uh, the individuality of, of what you're uh, dealing with, but it doesn't matter. I'm just a person. The power comes from him. But the power has a purpose. And one of the purposes of power is to effect a conquest. Hallelujah. So you, you exercised, it's just like, you know, David used a sling and a sword to bring the giant down in his life. 
Okay, Caleb used, it was all words. You know, he said it all first. He actually conquered with his mouth. And then, you know, they went in and possessed the land. So what, what you should do, any sign of the enemy sticking his head up again, you should attack that decidedly with your confession. Say to the enemy, I'm not giving you any space. You're out of here in Jesus' name. Praise you, Father. Yeah, now just go ahead and lift your hands if you would and bless him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, just for your information, I personally had no idea this service was going to go this direction. But you know what it is? It's, it's hunger. You, you guys are hungry for results. You're not willing to delay any longer. So, you know, that's really what was happening with Joshua and Caleb. They, they crossed over the, the Jordan River. It was a miracle, you know, how, how they were able to do that. And then they went in and just started affecting what God had set up from before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah, which is what your victory is all based on too. Hallelujah, yeah, just think, all, all your life, it belonged to you. Hallelujah, and now you're, you possessed it. Amen. Glory to God. You got saved, and now you're going in to possess what Jesus died to give you. Hallelujah, which is the will of God for every believer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.